We painted the broader picture just before the break. Let's drill into some of the applications and some of the services that we can enjoy and perhaps focusing on some of the, the most popular applications right now. Yeah, so I mean, one of them that's, uh, that's quite popular is, is messaging. It's uh, messaging in terms of things like uh, email, uh, the use of uh, text or instant uh, messaging. Uh, all those uh, nowadays are moving towards a managed service framework. Um, the ability to uh, pay for it on a pay-per-use basis or uh, ramp up um, capacity during uh, peak hours, uh, peak periods, year-end, etc., uh, is definitely uh, happening. Uh, so messaging uh, and telephony are two examples of which we are seeing a, a huge trend towards uh, managed service, being delivered by managed so services. So the biggest request right now, that would be... Now, I think I'd echo on, on, on telephony. I think we finally got to the point in South Africa where companies actually trust hosted and managed PBXs. You know, that for a long time, they, 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 we, we've, we've had a almost tr very traditional view of telephony. So people wanted an ordinary telephone line and they wanted to have a box that they thought looked like an ordinary telephone exchange. And I think we've seen that shift now, that there's, there's now a trust in the fact that you don't have to have the box. You can, in fact, have hosted or managed services as your, as your telephony, and that the line doesn't have to be an ordinary old-fashioned telephone line. It can be simply um, an IP or an Ethernet connection, which may be sharing other services, uh, and we use voice of IP or, or, or SIP over the top of that to deliver the service. Uh, and essentially, the endpoints, the telephones, just become you know, IT devices. They, they, they just like PCs on the desk. And I'm sure corporates actually just want to do this through, through one company and not through many. Would that yeah. be the right assumption? No, I, think, I think there are... Uh, best of breed players uh, in, in the different sectors. I mean, uh, as Internet Solutions and, and being part of Dimension Data, we actually use uh, several uh, managed service providers for our key applications. And these are applications such as CRM, uh, such as service management, and, uh, and even down to uh, service provisioning and billing. Um, the idea that you cannot get flexibility uh, you cannot get uh, price competitiveness uh, going a managed service uh, way uh, is absolutely wrong. Uh, do you think that it's all about product convergence as well, where we started to see players offering full packages? Is that where we're going? I think there is a tendency to, to move towards convergence. Obviously, the convergence in the, in the telecom sense is, is, is a huge trend. Um, we're certainly looking towards you know, telecom services no longer being separated out into their voice and data, into internet and so on. Um, I think there is sometimes a tendency to, to try and bundle too much, um, and, and I think go with, with uh, Raj on that, is that one wants a trusted partner, but that doesn't mean that, that necessarily the partner is the only player. You may have a partner who brings in a best of breed supplier behind them, and, and I think that's common, uh, increasingly common to find that uh, companies want um, a trusted partner who's providing the service, but they'll often have uh, multiple uh, other partners behind that. So we spoke about trust and when it comes to security and that is what is on most people's minds. We know that big corporates wouldn't um, um, ensure, they would ensure in fact that things are of course very secure with their uh, providers. But how, do, how does one going around and, and pick the right company, the right company to actually give you the services that you need and that you know is safe and secure? Yeah, I think uh, what's important here is uh, a track record. Uh, proof of the ability to deliver uh, across a wide variety of different client types. Uh, the ability to not only have one type of solution, to be able to have multiple different types of uh, OEMs in the background supporting that solution. So if there is, happens to be a, a flaw in, for instance, a Microsoft uh, uh, system, operating system, that, that that company can be able to overcome that because there are multiple layers of security. I mean, security is one. I mean, these days, a lot of the OEMs are releasing patches and updates daily. And, and organizations have to look at that patch and determine is it worth the risk of upgrading or not and accepting the patch. Um, if that, you multiply that amongst thousands and thousands of uh, uh, companies in South Africa, for instance, you know, that's, that's, that's where the productivity uh, factor comes in. It, it's just not productive to have that many people looking at something daily. Uh, whereas a service managed service provider who is adequately staffed, who has the right processes and systems, uh, uh, is able to um, do that once and, and make that call on behalf of their clients. How regulated is the, the environment here in South Africa? Do we have rogue managed service providers in the country? It's, really, it's a pretty interesting question. I, look, look there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing in terms of, of regulation that would apply to managed service providers per se. 
Um, the communication side is typically regulated as in terms of licensing. Um, but uh, it, it's an interesting point. I think when you talk about some of the, the, the rules there, I think it's more about compliance with standards, the mention of ITIL standards, which are the, 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 the IT benchmark, if you like, for, for processes and, and, and procedures in running IT systems. Um, and then also, of, often OEMs will apply their own certification and standardization. So what, what, what one's looking for uh, when you approach a managed service provider is do they have the certification from the OEM or the original equipment provider to operate and support that equipment. So that's th in the multiple levels of certification there that you look for, depending on the particular provider. Eleni, I think um, Angus really brought up some uh, very important topic. That is, in the past, a lot of managed services were, were delivered by IT companies. Uh, today, there is uh, the ability for an, a company that can work across the ICT platform to be able to leverage the telco services uh, to be able to have common security platforms across both so that you don't have one security policy in the telco layer and another in the IT layer. Uh, that's uh, coming into the forefront. So companies uh, like Internet Solutions who are able to leverage both the IT and the I, uh, communications technology platforms are able to deliver the kind of the best service to their clients versus uh, one where it's probably partially meets the requirements. Mm. How many uh, managed service providers do we have in the country that are very trusted? Is it a very big group of companies that offer these? Perhaps it's out of your, your bet. But no, look, there are, there's a number, there are a number of, of larger players. Um, I think certainly uh, Raj is right that historically most of the managed service providers in, in South Africa have come more from the IT side than from the telecom side. What we find interesting is, is, is how that convergence is, is starting to um, you know, affect players who were, for example, example, traditionally in the voice space. So historically in the voice space, you had suppliers of PBXs, and then you had the telcos. Um, if, you, if you look at the, the effect of managed services on that, now you have players that perhaps historically IT suppliers or um, uh, you know, the, the, the providers who, or this, what we call system integrators who provided the, the IT systems, are now suddenly having to deal with voice. So what you're looking for, of course, is a company that's got the breadth. That, that actually knows voice, knows data, knows internet, and also knows the IT systems and the layers behind them, and then has the scale to, to implement and support that. Uh, scale is important. I mean, it's, it's not to say that there's a, it's, it's impossible for, for there to be very small players, and there's some very specialized players, but I think there is only a handful of players with the scale to deliver um, substantial managed services in South Africa. So tell us about the relationship between the clients and the managed service provider. And I'm sure there must be a contract between the two. Absolutely. It has to be uh, uh, governed by an SLA. Um, and that's the advantage, I think, of, of managed services, that instead of actually worrying about the underlying technology, it's delivered as a service, it's delivered as a, on an SLA basis, uh, requiring things like uptime, uh, mean time to repair, uh, and, and that limits the number and the capability that an uh, organization has from an IT or ICT perspective because they generally have to have SLA managers. Uh, it's also, I think, prudent to have uh, what we call a single service aggregator model where potentially one company could manage all the other suppliers on the behalf of the, of the customer. So that's also one other aspect of a managed service. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So service level agreements are absolutely central. There's, there's no doubt that what one needs parameters that can be measured both by the customer and by the provider. Um, what we do see increasingly is that SLAs not only are, uh, are SLAs tied to performance, but they also increasingly uh, there's pressure to improve efficiency at the same time. So in many cases, when companies are looking to outsource, one of their primary decisions is around saving money and becoming more efficient. And we do see contracts starting to appear where there's an inherent requirement to become more efficient over time. Um, so pressure on the cost per unit. And so the future, what then happens to the companies which of course have in-house IT services? Is that now going to be done away with completely? Right. I don't think it's going to be done away with completely. I think uh, large organizations need to have a core competence and, and I don't think that piece must be outsourced, but things, uh, they should own things like architecture, about service level management, but common things such as you know, server infrastructure, uh, networking, telephony, messaging, uh, video conferencing, certainly those type of applications, and some of the ERP 
um, type of applications uh, are, are very well suited to a managed services framework. So it doesn't, um, of course, uh, paint a brush again across every single aspect of ICT and I I IT, that you still can have something in-house, Angus? No, certainly you can, but I think what drives industries, and we've seen that, um, say, in the banking industry in South Africa, where one, once uh, one or two players start to move in the direction of significant outsourcing of, of their services, the others have very little choice but to follow at some point because it's a competitive advantage. It, it gives a real competitive advantage being able to um, not only uh, reduce costs but also to put that expertise into the hands of experts that, that do it all the time and that have the scale. Um, so I think you'll find industry by industry. Certain industries have very traditional ways of looking at it. Banking has always been one where a lot is done in-house. But even in South Africa, we're seeing the trend towards a lot of the, the, the core telecoms and IT infrastructure, perhaps not the banking-specific infrastructure, but the, 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 the general infrastructure very much moving out. Fantastic. Gentlemen, we have to leave it there, but thank you so very much for joining us today. Much appreciated for your time. That's all the time we have for you on this month's edition of Talco Talk. A big thank you to Angus Hay from Neotel and Rajwani Appa from Internet Solutions. And until next month, from me, Eleni Jokos, it's goodbye.